Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, let's make something drop dead gorgeous. Stay tuned. So for those of you who are watching the video and you haven't yet decided to subscribe, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. I know that you have a lot of choices on YouTube that you can go to for crafting advice or crafting ideas. This should be one of them because after you watch today's video, you'll know why. We do some awesome crafting. We have a wonderful online crafting community. You're going to learn tips and techniques and see some of the most beautiful papers. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you. So guys, I promised you a drop dead gorgeous project. And here it is. I am not closing this all the way because my magnets are still drying and I don't want them to separate. I literally just made this right before I sat down to film the video. So I am going to give my magnets a chance to dry and then I might even add another piece of embellishment. Haven't decided yet, but I wanted you guys to see this awesome box. This box is nine inches long, three inches tall, two inches deep, and there's a secret. When you open it, look at those beautiful sections on the inside. You can put all types of goodies in here, or you can set it out in the bathroom. You can put your perfumes in here. You can put anything. As a matter of fact, I can even set my larger bottle of glue. This is my refill bottle, so I keep it out on my desk, and that's how I refill my smaller bottles. But I can actually put these out on my desk if I wanted to, to have that more classy upscale look but I wanted to show that to you because you could set this in a guest bathroom. You could put a couple of pretty uh, face towels in here, some beautiful soaps, some nice body spray, whatever you want to put in it, or it can be for your desk. Totally up to you. But isn't this just a gorgeous, gorgeous box? And again, I'm going to be very careful with it because my magnets aren't dry enough to stop them from pulling apart from the paper when they meet. So I wanted to show you guys this before we actually make it. Now, let's make it. All right guys, so to make our awesome little box, we are going to need some chipboard. We need four pieces that measure two and seven eighths by two. We need one piece that measures one and a half by nine. We need two pieces that measure two by nine. And we need two pieces that measure three by nine. And then I am going to be using this gorgeous pastel pink for the inside liner and maybe the side pieces. I haven't quite decided yet. I might change my mind as I get further into this tutorial, but I have two 12 by 12 pieces here. And then my outside cover for this entire box is going to be this gorgeous, Italian wrapping paper that, yes, my sister found this for me. And it is from a company called Cartos, K-A-R-T-O-S dot I-T. This is the last sheet of this that I have, but I want to use it on this project because I think it's just beautiful. So if you don't have sheet paper, you can join two pieces of 12 by 12 together to be able to make this project. But go ahead and count on needing at least four pieces of 12 by 12 paper. So I am going to take my paper, and this is directional, so I need to make sure that I'm going to have the top going in the right direction. So I am going to go ahead and peel the tape from the backs of my chipboard, and I will be right back. Okay guys, so I have my tape off the back of my chipboard and starting with 
my three by nine inch piece, I'm going to place it right here. Then I'm going to take one of my two by nine inch pieces, place it next to it using about an eighth of an inch in spacing. I don't need any more than that. Then I'll take my other three by nine inch piece and I will place that down with about an eighth of an inch in spacing. Then I'm going to take my two by nine inch piece and I am going to place that down with about an eighth of an inch in spacing. I'm sure you guys are noticing that common theme, eighth of an inch. And then I'll take my one and a half by nine inch piece and place that down. And how much spacing did I use? One eighth of an inch. So now I am going to take my finger blade and we're going to remove some of the excess paper. And because this paper is so lightweight, it really is not going to crack. But if you have any concerns about your paper cracking, take your stylus or your bone folder and just use the edge of the chipboard as a guide and just drag it along to create that score. And that will help minimize the cracking that your paper might do. So now I'm going to take this, we'll stand it up, fold over our edges, and already I see something that I'm not too happy about, but I can fix it, and I'll show you guys what it is. So when I was laying down my chipboard, I really should have trimmed off this because I've got the um, barcode here, and there will be that much of the barcode showing on this. I'm not gonna stress over it because I can fix it. So I'll show you how I do that once we get to that point. So now I'm simply going to miter my edges. Then I'm going to take my wide tape, just like I did on my other box, and I am going to place my tape down from top to bottom here, all the way across my chipboard and I will be right back. All right guys, so now that we have our tape all over this, let's go ahead and take our edges and fold them over just like this. And we'll do this on all four sides of our beautiful, beautiful board. Then I'm gonna take my big old spatula, get this stuck down, go along my edges, make sure everything is nice and crisp. And my fingers are literally stuck. Okay, so once we have everything done right, we're going to end up with a box that looks like this. And guys, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. So now we need to place our liner piece. And the liner piece is going to measure 11 by eight and three quarters. So what I'm going to do is take my tape and run tape from end to end on this liner. Okay guys, so when we get ready to place our liner piece, I am actually standing because it's easier for me to do it this way. And I am going to take my liner piece that measures 11 by eight and three quarters, and I am going to place it down. Try to get it nice and even. Standing helps. Then I'm going to use my spatula to get all of that paper worked in. And then I'll use my spatula and I want to make sure that I get everything nice and stuck. When I know it's stuck, I will just start 
defining the spines by using my spatula to go inside of the creases and get everything laid down. And now we can go ahead and make the side pieces for this. And to make our side pieces, it's going to be very simple. So I am going to bring in my extra paper that I had left over. I am going to take two of the pieces that measure two and seven eighths by two, and I am going to put them down on this paper. So I am going to flip it over like this, bring it all the way to the bottom, and lay it down. Then I'm going to go ahead and cut off that amount. And then I'll do the same thing with the second one. I am simply going to take it, place it all the way at the end. And now I can cut off this amount. And now I still have this beautiful piece that I can save. So what I'm going to do now you guys have seen me do this over and over. I am going to cut up to the end of the chipboard, then flare out. And I'll do the same thing over here. So I'm cutting up to the end of that chipboard and flaring out. And what that does for me, it just makes sure that I have enough paper on the side so that when I wrap around, I don't have any of that chipboard showing. So I am going to use my glue on this piece because we are working with a very small piece of chipboard. So I will use my reptile glue and we won't have any warping. So I am just going to take this, get it down just like that. Then I'll use my spatula, really work that glue in. Now I'll use my finger blade and we are going to get rid of the excess paper. And I don't know if you guys noticed this about me or not, or if you picked up on it, but I love making boxes. Boxes and paper purses and bags, that's my thing. So we are going to do the same thing over here, just like that. Now I'll take my glue on this one. And y'all know I'm using reptile glue. It's actually called reptile adhesive, but I'm just so stuck on calling it reptile glue that they let me get away with it. So I am going to fold this over. Then I'll use my spatula to spread out my reptile glue underneath just to get everything nice and stuck. And then I am going to trim away my excess. Box making is as easy as I'm showing it right here. There is a more complicated method for box making, but why do it? Okay, so once we get ready to put it together, the first thing we need to do is a test fit and we want to make sure that it is not protruding at the top and it isn't. So at this point, we can go ahead and place our glue and I got the question yesterday, can you use hot glue on this? Guys, when you're making your project, you can use whatever it is you want. I wouldn't use hot glue because it can be thick. It can also show using reptile glue. This glue dries clear. So all of my little imperfections aren't seen um, with hot glue. It just isn't my thing for this type of crafting. So I am going to take this piece, place it down, bring up the front. So I placed it down going in about an eighth of an inch. And then I'll bring up the back. And basically what I want is this. So I have got it pushed down here and now I'll squeeze in on my sides until this dries. And I'm just gonna hold it long enough for it to actually set up and dry. And before I realized where this would actually fall, I thought I would need to fix it. You know what, I'm not even going to worry about that being there because when we close this, it's covered. All right guys, so this side is all dry and isn't this just pretty? 
So we are going to take our glue and we're going to place our glue again on the three edges of the chipboard that are raw. So we're going to cover those in glue and we'll go ahead and put this down and we'll get our box at the point of being closed. So I've got my glue on all three sides. I am going to take this piece, place it on the inside just like that. I'm going to go in about an eighth of an inch, just like I did on the other side. And you can see how that's in there. I am going to press down, get that stuck. We'll give this a few minutes to dry and then we're going to put in the beautiful dividers. All right guys, so our side is dry enough for us to be able to go ahead and place those inside pieces. All right guys, so our sides are dry enough, not completely dry yet, but dry enough that we can go ahead and place our inserts. I have already covered one insert and we're going to cover the second one. So we're going to take our chipboard piece, place it down just like that. And let's go ahead and remove that. And now I will take this piece, flare out, and then I'll do the same thing over here. So I am going to flare out here. And I still have a little piece of this left. And guys, it is just so pretty that I am not tossing that. So now that we have our chipboard down, I am going to take my glue and just place my glue on the board. Then I'm going to take this and place it down. And now I will remove my excess paper. And now I will remove my excess paper. And then I'll use my big old spatula, come in, clean this up, get it nice and clean at the top. And now I have two of these ready to be placed on the inside. The first thing that we need to do is we're going to test for fit. And where you place these on the inside is completely up to you. I think what I want to do with mine is I am going to place them on the ends like this. Of course, I'll get them straight, but I want to have a wider section here in the middle and then two smaller sections, but do a test fit. If you have to force it in, you need to trim off just a little bit. If you're not forcing it in, then it's time to place the glue and get it stuck down. So just like I did with the side pieces, I am going to place glue on the three raw edges and we're gonna get it stuck down. Okay, so I didn't place too much glue, but enough that I will have a very good stick on here. So for this, I am actually going to stand up so that I can be looking down when I place this. And I can get it straight. So then I cleaned up any globs of glue that I had and I'll let the reptile glue just finish drying clear. I am going to remove this one, place my glue on the three raw edges of this one. And then we're gonna get this one stuck down and we're gonna have a beautiful three section box where those sections are not going anywhere. So then I'll take this one and I'm eyeballing it guys. I could pull out my ruler, but I'm not. I'm just gonna eyeball my placement. And when I think that I have it where I want it, I am going to press in and press down just to make sure 
that we have a good stick. I'll clean up that glob of glue. Then we're going to let this dry and I'll be back. All right guys, and while everything is drying, y'all know what time it is. I am going to place some feet on here because I like the way that it finishes off my projects. Now you don't have to do this step, but I am going to place my feet. And I'm using these little feet and they sort of remind me of the feet on um, a claw tub. So I am just placing these down where I think they're gonna look nice. And like I said, you don't have to place feet on yours. This has just become my thing. So I am going to place one back here. And then I'm going to place one right here. And now we have our feet on. So I am going to let that set up for just a moment and then I'll be able to flip this over. Okay guys, and while my feet are drying, I want to go ahead and place a sweet little handle here on the top. And you know why? Because I can and because it is going to make this look absolutely fabulous. Some of you might think this is over the top. Don't do it, but for me, this is just par for the course because I think if we're going to do something like this, let's do it big. So I am going to hold this until it sets up. First, I'm going to pick it up just to make sure I have that centered properly. And then I'm just going to hold it down until it sets up enough that I can let it stand on its own. All right, guys, so I have my feet on. Isn't that cute? have my handle on, this is just to die for, it is gorgeous. And now I need to add my second magnet. So I am going to take my magnet, place it right there, put just a little bit of glue here, and then I will bring this over so that I can find my spot. And you can see that glue is there. So I am going to take my magnet off and with the glue side down, I'll place it right here. And now I just need to let this dry and I'll be able to show you guys the finished project. So to make it dry or to hold it down, I am going to place a clip because I did have a lot of glue on there and I need to let that set up and then I'll be able to come back and share the finished project with you guys. And here it is, guys. Isn't this just so stinking cute? It screams elegance. It is absolutely gorgeous. And it was so simple to make. So I hope that you have liked this video. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys have a great day. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.